The number of conversations at Khan Academy in every function that we've had, from content to marketing to partnerships, where we're looking at data, we're slicing and dicing the data in some interesting ways, and people are like, oh no, this is happening. Like someone else is like, no, that's not happening. This is happening. Oh wait, we have to look at the analysis this way. It's happening in every function. One of the things that's frustrating for a long time in math, and I think a lot of students too, is, is that the way that we learn math is still like, you know, it's how I learned it, you know, many years ago, and how my parents and grandparents and how everybody's, and it's like we're, st we're not taking into account the modern era. We're not taking into account like, hey, technology exists. My name's Chris, Chris Lippy. I've always wanted to and um, let students, you know, pretend like technology exists. Data science gives us that opportunity to use modern tools to help us explore the world we live in. In essence, like we start off with, um, and how we started with the beginning of the year is like, let's collect some data on something that we're interested in, right? And then we just kind of work our way into either creating a model, and then once we get a model, comparing it to a different model, um, or comparing models to each other, um, and then using models to predict things. Or if our kind of main goal is we have some research questions, we have, or we have some question we want to answer. Then we'll look at um, different kind of statistical tests um, and analysis that we can do to try to answer that question. My name is Maddie. I am a junior at Conlab High School. When I first signed up for data science, it's a new course at our school, so honestly a lot of people um, didn't quite know what it would entail. Um, my mom was telling me how Chris had started a data science course. And I was like, what's that? My name is Nicholas. Uh, I'm studying at KLS. If you do not understand what data science is, I think you just need to do a project or something similar to a project where you have some data. I think it's going to be natural for a person to try to analyze the data because those values, uh, they have to mean something. When I joined, I thought it would really just kind of be like, here are functions and you know, make things, I don't know, <laughs> like very straightforward and very boring and you don't really use creativity, but like, I don't know, I've used so much of my creativity in this class in terms of like, like finding correlations and finding stuff and like representing data. And like often when you think of like technical things like computer science or whatever, like creativity is not the first thing that you associate with it. I feel like data science, for me at least, was the thing that allowed me to really express my own creativity and really help let me do investigative things. We advertised the class um, and um, we opened it up to everybody. Basically, you know, Algebra 1, if you've taken Algebra 1 up, which is pretty much everybody. So yeah, that's why the class has, um, you know, freshmen through seniors in it. Really, the prerequisites, mathematically speaking, are so low that it really opens it up to everyone. And um, everyone, it has that kind of natural, low floor, high ceiling built into it, right? So it's like you can go, you can just kind of hit, depending on your, your abilities and prior knowledge, you can kind of hit the bottom level questions, or you can go as deep as you want into it. That's one of the best things about data science is how applicable it is to like everything. I think I'm using data science in like my senior thesis project. Um, which is about like music education for children. And I'm using data science there to like analyze people's um, results and like analyze people's feelings about music. I mean, I think everyone, like even if you're not like a STEM person, an art person, anyone would benefit because I think it, it just like goes into any, any field because you always want to understand like there's always going to be some aspect of analyzing data and like you know, finding out relationships between that. The coding part is probably the scary part for most people. And it may be intimidating at first, but um, anybody can do it with a little bit of, of, of effort and a little bit of follow through. As we've seen with our students, right, that have no coding experience ever and come in and been scared and petrified, um, right? And then they come out and being like, hey, I can do this after like a couple weeks. Right, honestly, just that there's a little bit steep learning curve at first, and then then it's kind of smooth sailing after you can get through that peak. I still consider myself, you know, beginner to moderate when it comes to a programmer, and I have a lot of friends that actually are programmers um, as their main jobs, um, and I'm, I don't consider myself one of them. So, what would it look like if 
the beta one. So we, and again, whenever we see the betas, the Greek letters, we're talking about our DGP, we're imagining the whole population. Right? So all the fishies in those two digits. Students are constantly saying, hey, how would you do this? And I'm like, heck, I don't know. Go figure it out. And you know, I can help you figure that out. And then do a pre present to the class. Um, and they'll do that, right? And it gets them into it. And then I learn, we all learn, they learn, it's cool. Um, so anybody can teach this, um, which is another cool thing about data science. Um, a history teacher, an English teacher, I mean, literally from any realm, any domain, anybody can teach this. Um, and I think it would be really cool to get that um, out in school. So we have, because you know, a history person is going to bring their own interests into their data science course, as opposed to an art teacher. Um, and um, that, remember, I talked about that low kind of that low barrier to entrance. Um, so that allows anybody to be able to honestly teach it. Forty years ago, who has big data? Insurance companies had big data. Today, almost everyone can have big data, right? We, we, we have big data at Khan Academy. You have big data, obviously, in social media and e-commerce and all of that. And can you look at those data sets and can you make inferences in those data sets uh, that allow you to ideally serve people better? Right? It's happening in every function. And that means it's happening around the world in every industry. So it's incredibly empowering. And frankly, if someone isn't able to cogently enter into those conversations, they're going to be at a huge disadvantage. So what do you think is the single most important concept that you learn in data science? Do your homework. <laughs> data, data science rocks. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>